The last thing I want to talk to you about is talk to you about the treatment of patients with hypertension. That is, we can treat hypertension with drugs. And we do treat hypertension with drugs. And billions of pounds later, and millions of happy, healthy customers later, we can safely say that drug treatment, when it comes to hypertension, is extremely successful and effective. Having said that, we don't treat everyone with drugs. I mean, you don't treat a gentleman of 86 with a blood pressure of 180 over 110, even though he's theoretically hypertensive. Because you have good sense, good common sense, which will tell you that it is the normal process of getting old, the normal part of aging, that your blood pressure goes up a little. Because you have atherosclerosis, and therefore the resistance to blood flow is going to increase. So the heart has to increase its perfusion pressure and it goes up and up. And you know these drugs are not like sweeties. They have side effects, serious side effects, and therefore they're not well worth doing. If you have a young patient who's 25 with a diastolic blood pressure of 105 and is symptomatic and you can't find a cause for that hypertension, you treat them. Because you know they have 60 years or so to live and you don't want them to have a coronary thrombosis. You don't want them to have a heart attack or a stroke. You want them to fall in love. You want them to get married and have kids. And even though that these drugs have side effects, they're well worth accommodating because of the likelihood that they may do some good. You need not know all about these drugs. I'm going to give you a list and I'm going to go through them. It is the technique which is the most important thing. And the technique is to decide whom you're going to treat. And then after that, be very sensible about it and use one drug only. But then come back and realize and appreciate that patients may not respond to one drug and you may need to use two drugs. And again, come back and realize that patients might not even respond to two drugs and you may need to use three drugs. The drugs themselves, but well, before I talk to you about drug treatment of patients with hypertension, I think it would be wise for me to talk to you about non-drug treatment of patients with hypertension first. Because if I told you that obesity was a risk factor, and drinking too much booze, and smoking too many cigarettes, and eating too much salt, and not enough exercise, and eating too much red meat, were all risk factors, it would be sensible to correct these before you put patients on drugs which may poison them. So you would slim down your hypertensive patient, you tell them not to go boozing, you tell them not to go smoking, you tell them not to have so much salt, you tell them to have fish and chicken and exercise. And if you can get by, by just giving them good, sensible advice that is great for you and is great for your patient. But patients are funny. People are funny. They might not listen to your advice. And you say to yourself, even though my patient is funny, I'm still going to give them trip treatment, therapy. And the kind of drugs you would use, well, you could use a diuretic drug. That's the simplest form. You recall I talked to you about diuretics when I was talking to you about treatment of patients with heart failure. And I told you that the sheet anchor of therapy in patients with heart failure was the use of diuretic drugs. Drugs that make you pass more sodium and therefore more water. So you get rid of the edema, you get rid of the congestion, the venous fluid drops and the fluid in the body cavities disappears and the heart can resume her activities in normality. And drugs such as chlorothiazide by oral agents were extremely effective. But well, how would a diuretic drug work in patients with hypertension? Well, it would reduce the blood volume a little because it would dehydrate them, and that certainly would have an effect. But diuretics do more than that. 
They stabilize small blood vessels and prevent them from going into further spasm. So they have an effect other than volume depletion and they're given on their own and they are very effective on their own. The second sort of drug you may consider using is the beta adrenal receptor blockers, the so-called beta blockers, drugs such as isoprolol. We came across this before and I told you that beta blockers stop the heart from accelerating and they reduce the cardiac output. Blood pressure, as you very well know, is a combination of cardiac output and peripheral resistance. And therefore, if you can lower the cardiac output, you will lower the blood pressure. The third group of drugs that you may consider using are the vasodilators. We came across this before and I told you drugs such as nifedipine, calcium channel blockers, are very effective. And the fourth group of drugs that you may consider using are the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, the so-called ACE inhibitors, and drugs such as Ramipril are extremely popular and extremely effective. As you recall, angiotensin converting enzyme converts angiotensin 1 which is ineffective, into angiotensin II, which puts your blood pressure up. If you can inhibit it, you stop blood vessels from constricting and going into spasm, and so the blood pressure falls. So there are four groups of drugs that you can, can consider using, starting with the simplest, the diuretic and the chlorothiazide, and ending up with the most complicated, the angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, and the Ramipro. The idea is that you use a very simple approach and see if you can get by by just using one drug and then coming back and realizing that patients may not respond to one drug and you may need to use two drugs and on occasion three drugs. Realizing that these drugs have side effects. Some of them have serious side effects and I'll come back to you and I'll explain them to you. And finally, Realizing that if you give patients two or three drugs to be taken two or three times a day on top of what they're already taking for their other illnesses, they might not take them. So there's always going to be a question with what we call compliance. Thank you very much for listening and I hope it's been helpful.